right, seven minutes after nine o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. How many of you have benefited from an organization, especially a business organization, or maybe the networking that is uh, made possible when you get to kind of get together and you do the different things with the different organizations? Uh, business is what makes the wheels turn in this economy, this commerce. And Dr. Philip R. Geist is in the studio with Mike Orlito, and uh, they are here from the uh, University of North Florida, serving Alachua, Bradford, Citrus, Dixie, Gilchrist, Levy, and Marion counties. And the Small Business Development Center is what we're going to focus on. Uh, Dr. Geist is the North Central Air. Area director for the Small Business Development Center at the University of North Florida, and Mike Orlito is a certified business analyst at the Small Business Development Center, also at the University of North Florida. And we're honored to have them both in the studio, and as well as Selma sitting off in the sidelines over here. Good morning, gentlemen. How you doing? Good morning. Uh, very pleased to be here this morning. Did you guys drive down from Jacksonville today? Um, I'm based in Ocala, based and Ocala. Uh, Ocala is actually our district office covering those areas that you just mentioned. Oh, okay, and is, do we have a campus in Ocala? Uh, no, we're uh, housed in uh, you know standalone offices as satellite offices. Oh, I guess okay. A and do the businesses of our community come to you for advice of some sort? Is that the idea? Yes, uh, businesses uh, can come to us for advice. Uh, we also go out to uh, work with individual businesses. And essentially, we are the outreach arm of the U.S. Small Business Administration. Oh, okay. The SBDCs were created by Act of Congress 1976. And uh, we are affiliated with SBA and affiliated with state university systems nationwide. Oh, excellent. excellent. And we're part of a Florida network to help small business at no cost. Have you both been doing this a long time? Uh, I've been doing it uh, 17 years. Oh, that's a long time. And yes. I'm coming up on three years. Well, that's, that's long enough. Sorry. Well, I, I'm wondering, especially with 17 years history, have the challenges for a small business changed because of technology or anything? I mean, or maybe even laws? Has, has it changed? Has the, the landscape for the small businessman changed? Yes, yes, it has, and it, it continues to change. I think business is uh, dynamic, and uh, you know the coming of the internet uh, affected small businesses uh, both positively and negatively. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know we've helped them try to use the positive side to expand their markets. Yeah. Uh, they've obviously, if you have a brick and mortar small business, have to compete with uh, internet stores uh, as well. Uh, there have also been other technology changes that have been very interesting. Uh, you know, years ago, if somebody had a service where they were providing it at somebody's home, be it uh, interior design or, or uh, lawn services, and you wanted to bill them, you had to generate invoices and mail them a bill, and they would mail you a check. And today, you can simply swipe their credit card on your mobile phone, and your operation is much more efficient, and uh, you have less cost in doing business. Oh, so who's... I don't know. Who's the easier businessman to help? The young guy who wants to start, he's 25 years old, he's got an idea, and he gets together with his other friends, and, and they're coming to you for some advice. Or the guy who's been around a long time and needs to understand the new world. Well, you know, we, we, we probably work with 75% existing businesses that uh -huh. are looking to strengthen or grow and get themselves to the next level. Um, but when we're looking at startups, you know, this environment that we live in here in Florida, we have a lot of retired people that are starting viable businesses now. Oh, really? So we really can't... I understand what you're saying about the young entrepreneur that we all think of as a venture capitalist, but we can't um, exclude the uh, older retired people So we this. have So we have older retired people perhaps going into business for the first time and so they they have the same mindset as a young person then somewhat and okay. they have an ex they have a they have a hit, they have experience which is great hmm. life experience and they have a very creative approach to what they're doing very often do you, do you give them any kind of um, guidance as far as the product or service that they want to sell I, I think for the most part uh, when when people go into business and uh, you know look at what is it I can do, it draws upon uh, one of several areas. Uh, one is either their past work experience, 
and uh, in terms of the you know retirees going back into business a lot of them become consultants or you know produce a product that uh, relates to what they did in the past uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, for others it's the hobby that uh, they have that where, becomes uh, a business they say I've, I've always wanted to do this for business I'm now in a position to be able to do it yeah, yeah. and then for some it's just an overriding passion where they say you know over the years I've been you know very involved in uh, you know energy saving and they'll go into a, a business that relates to energy saving whether it's uh, energy audit or producing uh, you know low energy use uh, appliances or devices or lighting or right. such our uh, business development plans heading for a thing of the past because like you mentioned if a person has a skill like woodworking and then they make all of this beautiful stuff and they go to the different shows and all would they really need to have a uh, projected business plan in in my mind, yes. Uh, the the level of the plan is a function of the type of business you're going into. But you, I always tell folks that the first thing you have to do in a plan is convince yourself that you know this is a viable venture. Because if if you can't make a profit or a living out of it, it's a hobby. It's not a business. And then the second thing that you need to do with the plan is to be able to convince any partners, customers, uh, you know, lenders, if you need funds to set this up, mm -hmm. that it in fact is uh, worth getting involved with. And many times we've had some instances where people will start a business and be working with a larger company in town as a subcontractor, and that subcontractor is concerned, you know, will you be around to fulfill the orders? So the plan many times is not for funding, but it's for being able to show that you're able to, you know, produce the work that you say you will. Yeah, even I guess even if you can fund it yourself, you still want some kind of some kind of a plan, some kind of a roadmap so you know where you're going. Do you, do you know who I feel sorry for? And I'm going to use this to ask a question. I feel sorry for the guy who wants to open up a little bookstore because you got Amazon and everybody likes to go online for books for some reason, especially mm -hmm. because of the ebook. Mm -hmm. So I will take that and make a question of it. Let's say I'm that guy. Mm -hmm. I want to start a little small bookstore. And I know that this is the reality of today. Do you have any feedback from maybe elsewhere in the country of other guys like me in, in my... Uh, hypothetical story here that have come up with some clever out of the box thinking that makes them a success in spite of Amazon and online booksellers. Let, let me let me answer that in in general. I think what happens is to be successful in a business like that where you have <coughs> both big box competition and internet competition. Yeah, right. You need to find a niche in the market. And I don't, off the top of my head, you know, have a file drawer I can pull open and see right. what other people did. Right, right. But we have great sources of research at the SBDC. We have a, a center called the Haas Center for Research. Uh, we have access to the research at the various universities. And, of course, you know, there's a lot of research you can do on the Internet. And what we do is we go out and we look at what other businesses are doing mm -hmm. in similar-sized towns with similar t competition. And, and seeing what bits and pieces will work where you are. Wow. Is, is it exciting for you guys when you help a business and a year later they come back to you and say, my goodness. Uh, it's very, you know, it's, it's very interesting. One of the things that I really appreciate is that every single client I deal with is coming and presenting a different story and a different picture, and then we have to adjust to fit the picture. Um, uh, some of the interesting things that we deal with are um, small business owners that are looking to enhance their success and enhance their profits and be able to make more money and hire more people. And so what we try to focus on with them is, well, what, what's it, what's it going to take? And we look at marketing strategies, and that's been changing rapidly because the Internet's changing so fast. And so now we're focusing on low-cost and no-cost Internet tools in addition to the classic things like... Um, uh, like uh, like bulk mail that's still that are mm. still very oh, yeah, useful, right, right. but at the same time those are more expensive. So we get them started on the low cost, no cost internet. We also um, have a program uh, called the Procurement Technical Assist Assistance Center at at our site in Jacksonville, and we help small businesses find ways to obtain government business. Because in the past few years, during the uh, downturn in the economy, government business has been very critical to a lot of small businesses. Um, and especially
especially uh, to the construction industry that we have so much of here in Marion, Levy, and Citrus in this area. And then the another service that we can provide is um, financial analysis to give a small business owner a basic financial health checkup on their business and um, and give them uh, ideas about how they can just tweak something here or there. Like for example, maybe their pricing. If they raise their pricing just one to three percent, they right, can make right. a difference in their net profit. That sort of thing. Um, how do you guys make money? My notes say that you don't charge. How does how does that happen, or why does that happen that way? That, that, that happens because of the uh, legislation that established us going back to 1976. Wow. The Small Business Administration found that there were many small businesses that had the potential to grow that were not yet at a point where they could afford professional help. So the SBA uh, puts up approximately 50% of our funding nationally and the other 50% is match that's provided by states and local governments. Oh, can you and can you give us a story? Uh, somebody who's come to you recently and, and, and I guess just tell us their story a little bit? And, uh, and maybe a typical one would be better than something atypical. Uh, I guess the interesting thing is there probably is no typical There's one. There's no and, typical and that's, one. That's the thing that has kept me interested in the program the whole 17 years. Really? No, no two days or two weeks are the same. Is there a typical mistake that businesses make that you steer them from? I, I think the typical mistake would be that people are you know, very good at what they do technically, and they may not have the business background, and they think that the technical skills will carry them through, but they don't look at, you know, what are the legal steps I must do, what uh -huh. are the cash flow planning. Uh -huh. Cash flow is the critical thing. A lot of yes. people will say, you know, I've calculated out at the end of the year I can make money, but nobody's looked at how do I pay the rent in month three. Yes, you know, yes. So that, that becomes the area that needs to be looked at. And what what is better? I mean... A grant or a loan or uncle, you know, rich uncle. Which is which is the best way to do all that? Well, rich uncle. Yeah. Rich uncle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> rich, rich uncle would be the one. Yeah. The, the, just, just to uh, clarify, that there are for the most part no grants. There are no SBA grants. Uh, uh, our you know biggest confusion are the people who come in with the programs or books that say you know the government has money for you. Uh, we I've seen that book. It's like this big. Yeah, too, right? yeah. We we haven't found that in those 17 years. I've never had anybody tell me yes, I was able to get a grant to start my oh, business. Oh, is that right? The one exception would be private foundations, which can give their money to anything they want, yeah. might have a specialized target area. So they might say, you know, if somebody is going to start a program to help at-home moms teach their, you know, homeschooled kids better. Uh, they might, you know, provide funding to help them start some jo job business program to do that. But for the most part, no grants. So most businesses start with family and friends. Uh, you then, you know, look at what is bankable. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and then beyond that, if you grow, you start to look for private investors. And there's very few that actually then are able to get venture capital or public monies. Let me, let me reintroduce you both real quickly. And uh, I want our listeners to know that we'll give information at the end in about six or seven minutes so that we can, uh, you, you can have uh, uh, a resource, maybe a website or something. Dr. Philip R. Geist is with us as well as Mike Orlito and Salma is sitting in the studio as well. Mm -hmm. And they are with the Small Business Development Center at the University of North Florida, but your office is here in Ocala. Yes. So, uh, knowing that, let's say we're, somebody's listening going, oh my goodness, I've wanted to do this all my life, I hate my job, I'm going to start my own entrepreneur thing. What do they do? Okay, they, they phone our Ocala office, and that is uh, 622 uh -huh. 8763 in Ocala. And if they are out of the area where that would be a toll call, they can call us on 866 998 8332. And uh, our administrative assistant will uh, you know, process their needs accordingly and get them to the right person or the right person to them because we can go out to the site of the business. And uh, we like to do that for uh, certain businesses, and we like to do that for businesses we're helping on an ongoing basis because it's much easier for us to get a picture of the state of the business and their needs by being there. Mm -hmm. How about the business that does not have a uh, storefront and they deal with intellectual property? 
I, I'm not music. sure I understood that. I can talk about businesses that don't. Uh, may I talk about businesses that just don't have storefronts first? Yes. Um, so that's that's one of the new challenges. But these days they can have an internet website storefront. And if they make an effort to have themselves prominent on the internet, like for instance, I was working with a roofer recently here in the, in the Tri-County area. And the roofer um, used to have an office, but to, during this economic downturn to save money has moved his operation home. And, um, and he was um, trying to make his uh, website more prominent. And, and this is one of the pitfalls out there. There's, um, you know, there's a, there are some vendors that do prey on small businesses, and so he had been approached by a search engine optimization oh, vendor okay. that wanted to charge him five hundred dollars a month for search engine optimization. That oh. can be, that can be handily obtained at a lower price. So that was one of the things we were able to kind of, kind of catch before it happened for him. And then, um, and then another one of his big challenges was just having to compete with fly-by-night vendors in the area, which have also popped up a lot during this economy because people out there that need to have roofing services are struggling. So I, I hope that that yes. answered your question. Good. Yes. But the intellectual property part of her question, though, uh, does that come up ever? I, and that would be maybe somebody who has a uh, copyright to a book, like an author, or uh, I don't know, what else would be an intellectual? Musician. Yes. Yeah, yeah we, we actually, the, I say the the most frequent intellectual property issue that we have, and many times businesses don't recognize it, and, and we have to point them to it, is trademark, particularly federal trademark. Oh. So if somebody has developed something oh, yes. and wants to market that you know, regionally and maybe dream of doing it nationally someday, mm -hmm. uh, we guide them through getting a federal trademark because that locks in recognition to their product. Do you, do you have a, re a relationship with the small business long term or is it just uh, uh, from the beginning and then I guess part two to the question is do they ever become too big for you? Do you have a, uh, is there a, a definition of what a small business is? Uh, well, a SBA defines a small business as less than uh, 500 employees and $100 million in sales. That sounds huge. Uh, it, it, is, it is huge. That, that covers 99% of the businesses in, in the country, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for us, realistically, uh, once they hit, uh, you know, 50 employees, they're at a point where, and perhaps the you know it's a gray area between 25 and 50. They're at a point where the local economic development uh, agencies are able to provide them with things like industrial development bonds and such. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And we partner with those agencies and and transfer the client over at the point at which they qualify for some of what I'll call you know municipal assistance because they're adding significant numbers of jobs. Well, sometimes when a person has an idea for business and they want to run with it and they come to you and you show them everything they need to do and they do it and then they go out on the street, there might be some people out there that say, well, no, you're going to have to do surveys and uh, do different kinds of mailings and things to, think if you're, to see if your business is viable. Maybe you should wait a year and a half. What is that advice to people that, you know, because I wouldn't want to wait if I had a business idea. Yeah, I, I generally tell folks that, you know, you do need to test. You, you don't want to leap in, particularly if your life savings are, uh, you know, at risk, so to speak. But uh, there are various ways of doing that. You can start by keeping the job you're doing and to do the business activity evenings and weekends. Mm. Uh, if it's a retail or sometimes even a service, uh, because you can display that service, you could start by you know, going to one of the larger flea markets. And uh, there are folks who would do you know, bathroom refitting, so it's a oh, service. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they would put some examples up of what they did in a booth in the flea market, start to get mm -hmm. some customers, do it evenings and weekends, and get to a point where they say, yes, I can actually take the leap or the step away from my job and depend on this to support me. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. that's scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and one of the other things that we suggest is going to work for somebody that is in the business that you ultimately would like to start so that you can learn the ins and outs working for another person that has the experience. Yeah, yeah, it would, it would make sense. Um, the two numbers that we we have so far from Dr. Geist and Mike Orlito are 622-8763. That's the local number. And then the toll-free number, if you're out of the area, is 866-998-8332. Correct? 
correct? Make sure I got it right. And and Robin, we'll put them on Facebook, and you can also call us here if you need that re- repeated as well. Um, when uh, when when a business falls and, and the news reports that there's going to be a bailout or something like that, that never applies to small business, right? We've been in radio stations that collapsed, yeah. <laughs> and we just we, we were on our own. There was there was no help like that. Uh, the the, the the, the help that's out there for small business, I think, is essentially through uh, SBA, where uh, there are uh, loan programs that small businesses can qualify for. Mm-hmm. And, and they're actually, a little bit of a misnomer, they're actually loan guarantees. You're getting a commercial loan from a commercial lender, and that lender is getting a guarantee from the SBA, which enables them to be more willing to loan to a small business that you know they're not otherwise sure might or might not be loan worthy under their uh, you know criteria. Uh, so that that is one way of of getting uh, loans and funds. Uh, the process of selling to the government is a very strong program that most small businesses don't think of, and the government buys everything from pencils to fighter aircraft. And they have to spend 23% of every federal contract with small businesses. So oh, really? So there are really? tremendous opportunities there. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, that's they, good they, to know. there are tremendous opportunities. I have a, a question. I'm going to use uh, what I know about Habitat for Humanity to ask this question. The way I understand it is this. If somebody needs a house, they go to Habitat, and they sit down with somebody, and then they'll either tell them, okay, you qualify, or you don't. Now, if they don't, they tell them what they need to do in order to qualify. In other words, it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz, and you go and get me the broomstick, right? Right. <laughs> so, so they have to. Now they don't. They're not turned down completely. They just told that. They just told you got to come back with these things. You either have to have this much experience, this much credit. You have to change your credit rating or something like that. So, does that same thing happen with you guys? Do you have somebody come and sit with you and say, "Look, I want to start a business," and you look at what they've got and you say, "Well, you know what? Do this, this, and this, and then come back to us in two weeks, two months, a year." We do, yes, and and we we try to view ourselves not as dream crushers, so we have to be really careful how we do that because uh, people get very excited about what they're doing, but we try to treat them as respectfully as we can. But if we have to tell them, you know what, we need to send you out to do some due diligence. We want you to canvas uh-huh. canvas a hundred mile area around Ocala, for example, and visit every single business that's doing what you want to do and then come back and tell us what your report is. Wow. And so sometimes one of our jobs is to to guide people through the process of talking themselves out of a certain idea. Any wacky ones you can tell us about? <laughs> like, like this bit. <laughs> no, no, I think what, 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 one, of, one of the advantages of working with us is that uh, we operate under a federal confidentiality. Oh, we, we, so we can't... We're, we're, we're treated essentially the same way that, you know, federal judges are. If somebody came to us and said, uh, you know, uh, I have a cash flow issue, I have a crisis because I haven't paid my taxes in years, uh, I can't turn them in as a whistleblower. If I do, I've committed the felony. Oh, really? Because I've broken that confidentiality. So when I come and to you with the business idea to be a juggling hot dog vendor, you can't share that with anybody. <laughs> right. I can't share that with anybody unless you sign a release that says I'm willing to let that story be shared. <laughs> and and that's very important. That was part of the initial program when we were set up because uh, unless people felt that they could truly open their souls and, and to some degree their books to us, uh, uh, you couldn't provide them with effective advice. And that makes a lot of sense, too, yeah. because you have to know everything yeah. from start to finish. Interesting. Well, yeah. I love what you're doing. I, I'm a big supporter. I think that's what makes America great, is the idea that we can start a business. And how many immigrants started businesses and people who were born here never thought to do that? You know, mm-hmm. they just it's, it's almost like the opportunity is there, but we don't see it because it was too close to it. Right. Well, if you, if you think of it, you know, uh, we were all immigrants, you know, if you go back far right. enough. Right. And, 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 you know, we were built on small business in this country. And mm-hmm. It seems like one of the common threads of the question you've been asking us is how do businesses be prepared, stay prepared, know mm-hmm. what they have to know, and so I think we need to talk a little bit, otherwise someone's going to be upset with us about workshops. So we offer uh, <laughs> workshops in a number of different areas. We have a startup workshop every month in our Ocala office for people that are are pre-venture, uh, getting ready to think about starting up a business. Um, we put on workshops where we bring in experts in the fields of social media, marketing, financial management, um, government procurement, nonprofit management, 
sales and uh, also relationship management and, and more mm. so um, those are some things that folks might want to watch for on our website which is www.sbdc no www.sbdc.unf.edu Okay, and that actually, right. Robert has that already on the on our website, so for yeah. those who need it, right. go to WOCA.com, look at the AM Ocala Live guest list, and you'll see at the 9 o'clock slot uh, Dr. Geist and Mike Orlito's names, and the, the website is there, and Robert will put the phone number after we're done with this. All right, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about all of the programs that we offer. Uh, and I'll just briefly mention them, and then folks can ta contact us if, okay. if they're interested. Uh, we have a program in which we are working with agricultural businesses and industries, and we are partnered at this point in select counties with uh, University of Florida's uh, IFAS, Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences. Uh -huh. And uh, we are working with them to partner in more of the counties where you know they can you know very easily work with somebody and tell them what you know, crop will grow in your land, how to grow it more effectively, right. uh, to some degree, even some, you know, general uh, assistance in, you know, how to market that crop. Right. But right. when the person needs some hands-on technical assistance where they want to spend several hours working with us to develop that marketing plan and, you know, maybe guide them through making some calls to uh, potential customers and such, we're able to do that. We have a business continuity uh, group, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm part of as a certified business continuity professional. And we help businesses develop their continuity plans. And everybody in this area thinks, oh, hurricane. But, but the number one thing that causes businesses to go out of business is actually fire. And really? Yes. And, wow. and the issue is not so much where people will tell me, oh, I've got insurance, I'm covered. Right. Well, you know, what do you do in the six months it takes to rebuild your building? Your customers need that product or service. They're going to go elsewhere. Right. You're going to have to try to get them back unless you've got a plan to be able to keep servicing them, whatever, you know, happens to your business. Wow. A good example of that is this vacuum cleaner store uh, just a block from here. Mm -hmm. That burned down. They, they built back up. Right. Yeah. I mean, pretty quickly. Right. Yeah. So they, they had a plan, apparently. Uh, we have a growth acceleration program to help uh, medium-sized businesses grow faster and become more effective in uh, the level they're at and then to grow beyond that in terms of market. And those are businesses that have been in business for roughly three or more years uh -huh. with five or more employees, sales of half a million to 10 million. When you look statistically at the country and say, where's the growth in small business? Where are the jobs being added? That's the niche that's adding jobs. For those businesses that are capable of of exporting, we also have an export assistance program uh, for really? them. Really? Oh, in wow. Many, yeah. In this many cases, awesome. we find businesses will be exporting to a country because they had a personal contact there. And they'll tell us sometimes, yeah, we've been exporting for years to Bolivia right, because right. You know, we have a contact there. Right. But we have no idea how to export to Chile or to <laughs> Argentina because the rules are different. Oh. So we're able to guide them then in expanding those uh, export uh, efforts. Hmm. We have uh, technology assistance programs to help people who are developing technology. And this is one place where there are grants hmm. called Small Business Innovation Research Grants, where the government is trying to help businesses develop technologies that will grow the country. Oh, wow. And uh, we have one of our certified business analysts who is working over in the power plant incubator one day a week now mm -hmm. and able to assist those businesses over there. Nice. And, uh, well, and all of that makes Ocala a, a good choice for somebody looking to relocate, too. Oh I, yes. mean, I mean, just the idea that we have that available. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there aren't as many communities where everybody you know, works together and, and partners and networks right. as we have right. uh, here. We also have a small business resource network, which uh, Selma oversees for us uh, at the local area. And what this is, is this is a professional network of accounting, uh, banking and commercial lending, uh, business consultants, uh, insurance uh, network, and uh, legal network, the services that businesses need. Uh, 
And as they grow to where they need that professional service, because we're not allowed to recommend a particular business, just as we're not allowed to reveal you know, details of somebody who's worked with us, uh, we are able to refer them to the network and uh, they're able to find assistance. Oh, and we great. also find there's inter-network referrals where an accountant will you know, say, I need an insurance agent who can work with me. You know, in, in, in some manner, we're doing the same thing. I mean, obviously we're doing it more in an entertaining way, but mm -hmm. when we actually work with clients who advertise on this radio station, that's kind of our... Our task is to say, well, what, we don't want to give somebody, you know, this unbelievable marketing campaign if that's not what they need. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to make sure what they get from us serves them, right? So and and helps their business grow. Right. Um, thank you both for coming in. I, I'm guessing there was more things you needed to say, but we need to uh, make room for our next guest, who, by the way, has some intellectual property. Yeah, they he do. Created a film. So <laughs> well, thank thank you for having us, and we look forward to being back in the future. Very yes. enjoyable conversation. Thank you both for coming in. Thank you, Sam. I know you were the quiet partner today, but thank thank you all for what you're doing. You're making Ocala a better place, and uh, thank you for bringing it to this show. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate that. Uh, the two phone numbers again: six two two eight seven six three and eight six six nine nine eight eight three three two. You can always call here. We'll be glad glad to re repeat those phone numbers over the phone. We'll be right back. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Our tractor services include bush hog, disking, front end loader, box blade, and stump grinding. We also have zero turn mowers for the smaller paddocks, aisleways, fence rows, and lawn care. Fence row spraying is also available for weed control. We are licensed and insured.